What is going on lads and welcome back to another player review. So this time we have got the worldwide player of the weeks which we have for September 8th which is today Thursday. So obviously if you are new to the game there's always two club selections. There's a player of the week on Thursday and then there is a club selection on the Monday and then it rotates every seven days. So every seven days you will have an update to the club selection which is a specific club and then every Thursday you will have a player of the week or a featured um, player pack here. So today we do have the worldwide players which seems to be players of the week for this week alone. So it's obviously a week behind basically so it's the it's last week's performances it's kind of based on just to make that clear to everybody so you guys can check out eFootballDB.com I will leave a link in the description below as we take a look at these players but all of these players here they only have one like rating they don't have any levels you don't need to train them they are effectively the finished article so you don't need to train them or put in any progression points into them um, and we're going to take a look at a couple of them I don't think that you know they're all worth investigating too heavily because if you take a look at even this bottom line right we'll take a look at Kunde in a second but I think even for a couple of these guys here we'll get into it now like Pereira here he is on a form obviously all of these players have got really high form and this guy has also got unwavering form. He is a bit of a beastly player. His speed and acceleration are quite decent. His dribbling stats are quite decent. I would always look for the player skills. And this guy's got a bag of them here. He's got every player skill you could want apart from crosser as far as I can see as a winger. But if you are going to be playing him as an AMF, really, really good player. Obviously, there is players that you are going to be looking at that could, you know, potentially outperform him that you can buy for GP. But as is always the case with these guys, lads, with these players, if you go into the GP marketplace and you have 100,000, you will get players if you want to invest the time into them. These are more to kind of like you know, get an instant player that you can put straight into your starting 11. So I do think that Pereira, if you do get him, he probably is worth a pop, but I do think that his dribble and ball control and speed is probably a little bit too low for, you know, him have been a winger. If you're looking for an AMF, yeah, definitely. But I would say uh, that you will get better than him. So Rashford has been flying it for United. And this is a really good card, lads. You've got 90 speed, 90 acceleration. All these players have got 90 team play style proficiency as well. He's on A form, which won't matter to his, his, uh, his rating there. His form is standard. It's not unwavering, which is a pity. But I think the big thing with Rashford here, again, is his finishing. If you are going to be playing Rashford as a striker... His finishing just isn't high enough, right? It just isn't high enough uh, for, you know, going to be competing with like one-on-ones. Like when you compare him to the likes of Haaland or you compare, compare him to even somebody like Mbappe or who we'll see in a second, uh, Tony or somebody like that, that has a little bit more about him in front of goal. I do think that he is probably just a little bit under where he needs to be as a center forward. Now, if you are playing him on the left wing, that's a different story because he does have really good speed and acceleration and he does have a nice few um, playing styles and player skills as well. Like he's got everything there that you could possibly want, including long range shooting and knuckle shot and dipping shot. So if you're able to play him as a left mate, left wing and you're able to do some power shots, power driven shots, he could actually be a big asset on the left flank, not in, not playing through the middle. Next thing we've next up, we've got Kim Min Jae who is on A form as well. Now, this guy has got 79 defensive awareness. He's got 87 speed. His acceleration isn't the best. His aggression isn't the best. Um, it should be, I think, a little bit higher because this guy, I've watched a good bit of him for Napoli and obviously Napoli had a good win last night. So that might be reflected a little bit more. But yeah, I mean, not a bad player. Obviously, there is better players around. I think the meta at the moment is Ruben Diaz, Van Dijk, Rudiger, Alaba. Those guys are kind of the best in the business at the moment. And I don't think that this guy really changes that too much. Now, he does have interception, blocker, and sliding tackle. And he's a bit of a ball player as well. But again, if you do get him and you want to try him out, I think that he is worth a punt. Chilwell, similar to him. Chilwell, there's a lot of these kind of like, I would call these mid-range left backs or mid-range fullbacks where he doesn't have any exceptional stats. It's just kind of across the board, very decent stats. Dribbling 84, acceleration 86. Balance, stamina, ball control, tight possession, lofted pass, everything is fairly decent. His defensive awareness, tackling and aggression aren't the highest, especially as you can't train him up. But he does have super sub, which gives him a bit of a unique advantage. If you are looking to bring on a super sub, he will get a, a slight boost to his stats when he comes on and to be able to lift the team morale. 
Next up, we have got Kunde, who will finish this first line. Kunde looks like an absolute beast. 86 defensive awareness. I would reckon that his standard card is going to be better because you can train it up higher. You can get actually better acceleration and better defensive awareness. We will take a look over on eFootball DB in just a second. But I do think that his basic card is going to be a little bit higher if you are str strictly looking to make him an absolute monster on the attack, you know what I mean? Or on the defense, because uh, like a lot of these players, you can train them up exactly how you want them, like very efficiently if you get the standard player card and you just want to turn them into an absolute beast. The reason why these cards are sometimes a little bit kind of, how would you say, a little bit kind of more um, like, you know, their standard cards aren't as high is because they have kind of got like, kind of other stats that are like boosting up the players overall so like if you look at Kunde there he's got 78 ball control 77 dribbling and 78 tight possession I mean he's rivaling a winger like a, a good winger or a good left midfielder right midfielder with some of those he's also got extremely high passing but if you're looking for just an absolute dominant beast at the back he's got 79 acceleration he's got 83 speed He's got 86 defensive awareness and then the rest of his stats like tackling, aggression, they're quite high as well. But if you look at his standard card here on eFootballDB.com, we're going to be taking a look at him and you see here that he has got some extremely good stats here um, that are like even better. So he's got 8 acceleration and he's got 89 uh, defensive awareness, which is the new meta stat at the moment. If you haven't checked out my video on defensive awareness, check that out. I definitely recommend that one to check out. So moving back here, then we do have Joe Hart and Borjwin. Borjwin has been absolutely beastin' as well uh, in his league. But Joe Hart obviously coming off that performance against Real Madrid. Um, again, just a very kind of like, yeah, this is a very poor card. I think it's probably one of the worst cards for the players of the week because of his 79 reflexes. It's just not worth even really talking about. He's got no playing styles. He's only got low punt and he has only got standard form as well. So I think that that's a bit of a disappointing card if you are a Joe Hart fan. Borjwin is next up. He's a really good card, lads. I think he's an excellent card because of his balance and his stamina. Balance is, balance is underrated for wingers because with the way the game has gone at the moment, you need to be able to withstand a couple of challenges. I don't think it's as important as it was with V1.0 with the likes of Haaland and, play, and players like that that needed balance uh, boost boosters or whatever. Um, but I think for wingers and left and right midfielders, you definitely do need to have balance. And again, he's got a load of player skills. He's a very, very good player. He's kind of a unique player as well that he has got pinpoint crossing and all the shooting stats that you could possibly need and true passing and soul control, which is quite nice next up we've got mario jao mario who plays for benfica again he's not going to be a, you know he's a classic number 10 but he is down as a left midfielder he's not going to be somebody i think that is going to excel unless you're playing him as an amf he does have some fairly decent stats on wavering form he's got nice player skills but again that tight possession low pass ball control very very high i think you're going to have to have a very specific play style if you want to use him now this guy is an interesting one right 85 finishing, 82 acceleration, 90 jumping, physical contact's fairly high, and offensive awareness is fairly high. I think if you spin this guy, he will be a bit of a beast for you, lads. He's got so many player skills, including the underrated aerial superiority and gamesmanship, that if you are simming a lot of games, uh, playing against the AI, getting the events, this guy will be a bit of a, a, bit of a, a demon for you. He will score a lot of goals with the heading, the acrobatic finishing, the aerial superiority, and he's got 85 heading and 90 jumping. Even though he's not the tallest player in the world, he will definitely score you a lot of goals. And next up, we have got Rafael Liao. So we already covered Liao. I'm not going to go in too much detail with him because we already covered him in the, in the AC Milan pack last week. He's a beast, man. He is one of the best players in the game at the moment if you look at the, the the stats there that he has right 87 balance 92 speed 92 acceleration and 93 dribbling incredible uh trio of stats there and that is what you are looking for he's also got 84 finishing so you can play him through the middle and he has also got 83 offensive awareness and 84 ball control which is brilliant for a card that he is he's a very very good card you can play him left mid left wing or straight up top very very decent card and last but not least, we have Real Madrid's Tushimani. Tushimani. And he is a dominant card as well, lad. So he is down as a box-to-box. -box. He does have unwavering form. He's only 21 years of age. 
incredible player skills he's got all the player skills that you could possibly want for your dmf apart from i would say blocker and uh you know that's probably a big one he does have slide and tackle and interception but i would like to ha him to have blocker as well because he is a stopper you know but again you're looking here at his his actual player card itself incredible player card like absolutely incredible you've got really nice physical contact you've got really nice stamina and then defensive awareness is 80 ball control is 85 again if you are going to look at his standard card you can get something very similar to that and boost up his defensive awareness even more but yeah, I definitely recommend if you do get him, he is an absolute beast and he is probably going to keep his form all the way through because Real Madrid are always going to be winning games. So that is it for me, lads, for the player of the week, player review. Let me know what you guys think, if you are going to spin or skip, and I will talk to you later. Hope you enjoyed the video. Peace.